This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Rilla Miskin is a scientific adjunct at the Faculty of Archaeology at the University of Warsaw, uh, and he has graduated via Karazin Kharkiv National University in 2005 and worked there from 2006 to 2015. In 2020, he defended his PhD thesis entitled Ancient Coins from the Sites of Chernyak, uh, from the sites of the Chernyakiv culture. Uh, and the main area of his research interests are the finds of ancient coins on the territory of the Central and Eastern Europe, as well as archaeology of the late Roman period and the Great uh, Migration period in this region. So uh, with that, I'll hand it over to uh, Kirill. Dear colleagues, greetings from the very ready, very windy and already evening uh, kill in very north of Germany. First of all, I would like to thank the American Numismatic Society and personally Dr. Nathan Nelkins uh, for the really great opportunity to speak today. I would like to apologize in advance for my far from, from perfect English, so please let me know if anything not clear to you. Okay, uh, last September at the International Numismatic Congress in Warsaw, I had the excellent opportunity to share my observation about the Roman gold coin finds in the Barbaricum. This session was organized by uh, Dr. Gilles Brunsburg, to whom I'm very grateful for the invitation to participate. In fact, my lecture today, it's more extended, detailed version of the talk with the main focus on the finds in East Barbarico. So, as you can see, I will try to cover this problem's main aspect, although, admittedly, the subject is so vast uh, that I will not touch on many aspects either. First of all, I will begin with, with the term terminology. As you know, the Barbaricum is a Latin term that describes the area north of the Roman Empire borders inhabited by non-Romans, uh, it means barbarians. Traditionally, European scholars have adopted this uh, geographical division of the territory. The area of Eastern Barbaricum occupies the territory of present-day Ukraine, the Republic of Moldova, Eastern and Southeastern Romania, uh, Belarus, and uh, Western and Southwestern Russia. However, the main events will take place in the Ukraine, on the territory of present-day Ukraine, but not uh, in the east as, as today, uh, but uh, in the west Ukraine. A few words about the archaeological the ground against which the finds will be examined. Uh, it must be said that despite active archaeological research in Eastern Europe over the last 200 years, the cultural situation in the first half of the first millennium is still not entirely clear and very debatable. What is known is that the significant population uh, changes and movements occurred there toward the late second and early third centuries. In the south, the Sarmatians remained the dominant force, but around the early third century, Eastern Germans appeared here. Their arrival made same of the local population uh, moved to the east or south. The appearance of the Goths was the beginning of the Chernyakhiv archaeological culture, where, uh, which uh, existed uh, next one and one and a half uh, hundred years uh, until the Hulik uh, time. However, it is worth dwelling on a period not shown on this map, but this period uh, the second half of uh, third, uh, early fourth century AD was a most tumultuous and at the same time crucial uh, time for the territory of Europe. The Roman Empire was going through a period of political and economic instability, one which ultimately resulted in a major shift on, in its domestic policy. This period was also a time of a major a political, economical, and social transition within the Barbaricum itself, in its northern, central, and eastern part. This time uh, is associated with the intense contact between the barbarians and the empire. 
resulting in the growth of the Germanic prestige as a power military force. As we shall see below, uh, all this was a critical condition for the influx of, the, of Roman gold coins into Barbaricum. If come directly to the finds of the Roman coins of the territory of Eastern Europe, we should say that their study began actually at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th centuries, for example, the, uh, with, with the uh, works of Vasily Laskaronsky on the, on, the, on the left, on the, the slide. Uh, however, the breakthrough was made in the, the mid-20th century. It is connected to the names of two archaeologists, Ukrainian archaeologist Mikhail Brachevsky and Russian uh, archaeologist Vladislav Kropotkin, who after read the catalogues of the finds of Roman coins in Eastern Europe. These catalogues contained, among other things, little information about the finds of gold coins, a, totally, a total of 32 items of finds. My PhD thesis, defended in 2010, contained information on 44 fine spots of gold coins minted between the 1st and 5th centuries, including single uh, finds and hoards. However, this statistic became outdated very quickly. The reason for this is this era of metal uh, detector in archaeology. Unfortunately, this has been an absolute disaster, catastrophe in Eastern Europe, especially in Ukraine. An English researcher, Dr. Samuel Andrew Hardy, a cultural property criminologist, currently working, as well as I know, um, at the Norwegian Institute in Rome, relying on several sources, wrote about more than 26,000 illegal detectorists in Ukraine, which means that this, uh, of 2017, there was one detectorist for every 1,706 uh, uh, people. Compared to other European countries, this is indeed a catastrophic figure, especially compared to the number of professional archaeologists. It is currently around 300. That is, at least for 87 detectorists, there is only one archaeologist, in average, of course. Uh, much of the information about the findings from Eastern Europe is published in open sources. For example, the leading web resource in Ukraine, where the information about finds is published and then these finds are sold, is the Violity website. It consists a forum for treasure hunters and the, an, an auction uh, site. Unfortunately, in most cases, this, the, uh, this resource, uh, web resource, uh, is the only way to get information on new finds. However, it almost never publishes the find spots on the images of it. Finding, uh, finding out where a find has been found is therefore always very difficult, very challenging. In addition, it is not always safe for mental skills uh, to uh, use uh, such res resources. I just I just will give it give a typical example and, and really attention because it's it's really really shock content. Uh, so on March 12th. Uh, uh, 2016, a treasure hunter with the nickname Rex reported, over three years I have found nine IRA. I use the tenth one as a key ring. Can you imagine it? Almost four years later, this unicorn was sold in the Ukraine for two and a half thousand euros. However, it can be said that the, that the collection of this information has significantly changed our ideas about the distribution of Roman coins in Eastern Ibarbarico if only because we now have a huge base of new sources of, uh, at our disposal. It should be noted that in the last 20 years, only three gold, only three gold coins have been discovered in Eastern e Europe during archaeological investigations. I mean, it is uh, including Ukraine, Moldavia, uh, Moldavia, uh, uh, Belarus uh, and Russia. Only three coins during the excavations. So the last coins, it is information from detectorists. On this slide, you can see the dynamics of registration uh, of Roman coin finds in Eastern Europe. You can see a sharp increase in information about new finds of Roman coins. And of course, 
all of this as a direct results of the area of metal detectors. But we can see the similar situation in other parts of Europe, for example, in uh, uh, Denmark or and or, for example, recent years uh, in England, the data uh, uh, from the portable, uh, uh, portable antiquity scheme. So, uh, in my PhD thesis, I operated uh, with about 26,000 Roman coins of different denominations found in Eastern Europe. By 2018, uh, this, uh, 18, uh, this number uh, had doubled. Uh, moreover, I have about uh, 100,000 coin finds at my disposal now, both single and as part of courts. However, this is the top of the of the iceberg. By my calculations, only in the territory of Ukraine annually, annually is from 25 to 30,000 Roman coins or their ancient copies or imitations annually. As you see, the overwhelming majority of coins are the Roman imperial denarii. The considerable quantity also makes Roman uh, provincial coins and Antoniniani. However, gold coins, which constitute only a tiny percentage compared to the other coin categories, attract our attention today. By 2017, I had collected information about uh, on, on 286 finds of Roman gold coins in Eastern Europe, whereas by now this number has increased at least threefold. However, here and further in my lecture, I use mostly the 217 uh, statistics. It reflects the main trends in the chronological distribution of, uh, material, of the material, I guess. Uh, as can be seen, the vast uh, majority of the finds date back on the third uh, century. A more modest percentage represent the other categories. So now I propose slowly moving on the funds from these uh, different uh, categories. I will start uh, with the earliest uh, imperial aurea, which dates from the first and second centuries. On the whole, they constitute the smallest percentage of finds of Roman aurea in Is Barbaricum. Most of them are aurea from Antoninus. Uh, dynasty, uh, 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 Antoninus dynasty period. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to a characteristic future uh, of Aure from the territory of East Barbaricum. In most uh, uh, cases, uh, they are pierced. However, I will, uh, of course, address this uh, problem in more detail later. The topography of their finds provides interesting data. At this point, I would like to point out that only those funds with localization data, precise or, or more or less pre precise localization data have been mapped, although a relatively large percentage of funds cannot be precisely localized on their map. So as can be seen, uh, the earliest finds of early Roman array are known mainly in the western part of Eastern Barbaricum, closer to the border with the with the Roman Empire. We can see that uh, in Barbaricum, the finds of early Roman Aurei are generally located along the Roman limes. However, the situation changed somewhat already in the case of uh, Trajan's uh, 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 Aurei finds. Finds of Aurei of this time are known over a wider area uh, and more inland. In the case of the Antoninus period uh, coins, uh, it expressly, explicitly concentrated in central and western western Ukraine. That's uh, here. Uh, in general, the finds, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, our finds from the time of Septimius Severus are also known here. Um, although I only had two coins with the exact localization of the find at my disposal. In general, uh, the finds of the early Roman array in Eastern Europe are no less concentrated than in other regions of the Barbaricum, like in its central or northern parts. In this regard, a legitimate question arises. When did this array arrive in the Barbaricum? Did this coin arrive shortly after were issued or somewhat late? 
So in this case, let us go back to the archaeological map uh, of Eastern Barbaricum from the second half of the second century and early th third century. On the sites of all these archaeological and very, very different uh, ar archaeological formations, there are practically no finds of Roman coins at all. Not to mention, of course, Roman gold coins. All of this clear evidence that these coins, I mean, early Roman Aurei, arrived with some delay. But what delay? This, uh, the same applies to the finds of early imperial denarii. Statistical data show convincingly that the influx of denarii of the first, third, second centuries of to Eastern Europe occurred not earlier than the mid third century. At the same time, at the Gothic migration, as we spoke about at the very beginning of the lecture. You can, of course, ask, in, the, in that case, perhaps the influx of early Roman array took place in the first half of middle third century together with the early Roman denarii. So it is not all clear cut here, especially when we compare. Uh, the distribution uh, distribution of early Roman array and hordes of uh, 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 and hordes of early Roman denarii. In several cases, if we can see we can see that the some regions have findings of gold coins, but no hordes of denarii, and vice versa. Moreover. Uh, only some regions uh, have neither finds of silver hordes nor finds of early Roman gold coins. This might indicate the nature of the Roman silver and gold of the early Roman time and uh, in Barbaricum have no connection. In other words, then have th them have different ways and conditions of influx. I think Alexander Bush's hypo hypothesis deserves attention in this respect. In his opinion, early Roman gold coins arrived in the center of Barbaricum with a leg. This idea uh, Alexander Busche published in a paper devoted to this unique uh, Aureus of Marcus Aurelius for Faustina the Younger from uh, Stigaini from uh, North Poland. Indeed, this hypothesis is supported by finds of early Roman Aurei in grave context. For example, a fragment of Nero Aureus uh, from the Przewoz culture cremation near the village Josipivka in western Ukraine, or more typical example in the uh, rich princely burial from Hasleben Cemetery, when, which date back to the second half of the third uh, century. I think that in Eastern Europe, the first and second century array did not appear until the middle or second half of the third century. The final powerful, powerful argument is that in the uh, in Eastern Europe, early Roman array finds are linked to the territory of Chernihiv culture, whereas the emergen emergence of that culture only dates back to the mid third century. Let us now turn to the more difficult problem of third century array finds, which are more the numerous uh, on the territory of East Barbaricum. Very conventionally, they can be divided into several compact groups. As can be seen, array from the mid uh, third century may constitute the most significant number, followed by those associated with the Diarchic uh, period, that by those from the time between Tribunianus, Gallus, uh, and Gallienus. The lowest percentage had the early 3rd century and late 3rd century array. The array of the early 3rd century means uh, before Gordian III are mainly represented by the Caracalla and Severus Alexander's issues. In the Eastern Barbaricum, uh, they are known only from Central and Eastern Ukraine. The problem of the time and sources of the influx is rather complicated. In principle, it cannot be excluded that the coins arrived shortly after the minting, at least in written sources. For example, uh, the Crypta Historia Augusta, we can find evidence that Caracalla paid the Germans for the peace. Uh, German activity on the frontiers of the empire was already evident in the 
in the early third century. It means when the, these coins uh, were in circulation. Nevertheless, it seems more plausible that these coins arrived later, at least in the middle of third century or even later. We do not have much uh, data on this as yet. However, perhaps this treasure hunter find from Western Ukraine can speak uh, of it in indirectly. Uh, of course, this is fine. It has a small credibility because like, like of, of, of uh, treasure hunter's information, but this treasure hunter states that he found these uh, objects together. So uh, here we can see elements of belt set and weapons typical of the mid second half of the third century. However, we can also see that along with the Severus Alexander's Aureus, here was Decius uh, uh, Aureus. I very much hope that there will be more reliable data that can confirm this hypothesis in future. The next group of uh, Aureus files relates to the reign of Gordian III, Philip the Arab, and Decius. This times is associated with the beginning of the Gothic Wars of the third century, when a coalition of barbarian tribes, but above the all the uh, above all the Gauls, made a series of campaigns against the Balkan and Asia Minor provinces of the Roman Empire. As can be seen again, the background of the entire barbarian, the coins of this time are very clearly concentrated in the area of the Eastern Barbaricum. Almost one or two weeks, I receive information about new finds of such array. Even now, during the war in Ukraine, first, even now, first of all, because their finds are generally unknown beyond the left bank of the Dnieper, I mean, on the Eastern Ukraine, and are mainly recorded in Central and Western Ukraine. I think most uh, uh, members of the NS, uh, uh, NC are well uh, aware of the hypothesis that explain this phenomenon of such an incredible concentration of the mid third century Aure on the territory of Ukraine. As this hypothesis was first published in 2013 by Professor Alexander Boucher in the Numismatic, in the Numismatic Chronicle, and in 2020, we jointly developed this problem based on the latest finds, including archaeological ones. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Professor Boucher also presented this hypothesis uh, at one of the ANS meeting. Uh, let me remind you of what this is all about. So Professor Boucher, with whom I am fully agree, attributes this phenomena to the victory of coalition of barbarian tribes led by the gods of the Roman army of Decius in uh, 251 at Abritus and the seizure of the imperial treasure. At this point, disaster struck for the Romans as the barbarians not only killed the emperor, but barbarians got their hands on a treasure that may have included several tons of gold meant to pay the uh, soldiers. The new finds expressly confirmed that a vast quantity of gold from the mid third century arrived in, the, in Central and first of all in East Barbaricum. In the title of my lecture, I pointed out the lost splendor of the empire. Of course, I was referring first and foremost to the events at Abritus. It was here the empire suffered one of its most significant defeats and its splendor was practically taken away by the gods. Going back to early periods, we can assume that this imperial treasure contained coins not only from the mid third century, but also from the early third century, and possibly already from the first and second centuries. There is no doubt that such a victory meant a lot to the barbarians. Moreover, the procession of such coin confirmed this. Uh, perhaps this is why the vast majority of the coins have a hole or uh, were pierced most often above the emperor here. This coin have become one of the symbols of the elitism in barbarian society. Them are occasionally found in the inventory of the richest graves in the Eastern Barbaricum, in Cher and, or the uh, graves of the Chernihiv culture, such as the grave from the Chernihiv Ruski burial ground in Western Ukraine. Uh, 
Eight already were, were found by Trasha Hunter in a grave in the Khmelnytsky region in a Roman bronze, a bronze vessel. Sometimes the aurei were subjected cotton to cotton on such phenomenon was uh, brought to the attention of Alexander Boucher in his article in 2013 with defined uh, from the Starowiec. Another case is known in Poland at the Ulov on the left uh, side of the slide. Uh, it's a Ulov, it's a burial ground in eastern Poland. Not so long ago, in the cremation of the Selyshev burial ground in Ukraine, uh, were found one pool and fragments of 19 auri of the time of Decius, as well as fragment of the Roman bronze vessel. In general, uh, finds of cut auri are relatively frequent in the Eastern Barbaricum. This slide shows only part of it. Such specimens are clearly more common in Barbaricum than in the Roman Empire. The custom of cutting array and placing them in graves is probably a common feature of the ancient Germans. Elements of ritual spoiling are very known in bog deposits in Scandinavia, as well as in the burial rites of the population of the Prevost culture on the territory of Poland. Of course, the arrival of to such gold of barbaricum had its consequences. No way, it's, yes, of course, it had its consequences. Uh, at one time, both Alexander Busche and uh, Roger Blanc drew attention to the significant reduction in gold coin production after the events of uh, Abritus. That is also very clearly seen in the, the map of their finds in the Barbaricum. Nevertheless, already in the following period, the number of coins increases considerably. On the one hand, this is due to the intensification of coin production in the time of Valerian and Gallienus, but also an increase in the activity of the barbarian population. On this map, you can see Gallienus and the rulers of the Gallic Empire's coins separately. Uh, in recent times, especially the coins of the Gallic rulers are powerful argument that the barbarians took part in the fight against Gallienus on the side of his opponents. From Ukraine, I know at least five, five founts uh, of Postumus and Teteko de Faust uh, Aurei. So as you can see, they all are uh, pierced. I, I, I talked about it at, at least, at least uh, five uh, or this period, at least three hours of posthumous, but probably it, uh, of course, of course, it's it's uh, 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 more, uh, especially interesting. It is our with a Greek graffiti, uh, Guntion, which is kept in the National Asolinsky Institute in Roslo, uh, and the study of which is devoted to an article by Dr. Adam Degler, considering that the Asolinsky collection was originally formed in what is now Ukraine, this aureus must be a find from the region. But probably also this, this coin to, uh, can uh, I, uh, also found in the territory of Poland. So it's, it's an unprovenanced coin. Uh, the name scratched on this coin is probably Guntias, a Gothic shiftain of Ingentia Auxilia Germanorum Legia Decima Fratensis, presumably the owner on this aureus. Regardless of whether this very likely identification is correct, we have here a name on a Roman aureus and script in the Greek alphabet of the Gothic owner of this coin, most probably chief of the warbound uh, or comitatus uh, fighting for posthumus. Uh, there may be other examples of uh, uh, barbarian military activity that resulted in the influx of Aure of this time into the Eastern Barbarical. For example, this very rare Quietus Aureus. In our paper with Professor Bursche, we assume that it may have fallen into the hands of the barbarians during their campaigns in Asia Minor in uh, 216. Uh, this Aure of Quietus from London and Berlin have no provenance. But in our, this Alec Bush opinion, they may also have been found in Barbaricum, as evidenced by the presence of the hall. 
It is unlikely, likely, uh, likely that uh, similar reasons could also have been connected with the arrival of Aureus, Aureus of Amelianus to the barbarians, and possibly a second Aureus with a whole albeit without a, a known providence. Although in my publication of this Aureus, I have assumed uh, that uh, these coins may have been given to Barbaricum after the uh, were withdrawn from circulation with the empire and as part of policy of damnatio memoria. It is likely that the barbarians may have been employed as mercenaries in later times, after the Gothic Wars, which ended uh, in the reign of Claudius II. Uh, for the first time, coins from the last quarter of the 3rd century distribute in the territory of East East uh, Dnieper, which may indicate a gradual migration of the Gothic population to the east. However, also I think the evacuation of the provincia, uh, province, of, uh, province of Dacia played a significant uh, uh, role. An absolutely similar situation is the whole barbaric we see in, in the next uh, Tetrarchy uh, period. Perhaps some activity of the Goths in Pannonia as mercenaries is evidenced by the two finds of relatively rare Julian of Pannonia Aure uh, as yet unpublished. Uh, certainly, as uh, I showed uh, you before, the Aure were put in the burials of the Chernihov culture. Moreover, I am sure it is even more common that we think as treasure hunters can recover coins from burials, unfortunately. Uh, the large quantity of gold gives an impulse to develop jewelry art. Gold pen pendants of such time, of this time, in, in the uh, uh, late uh, third, early fourth uh, century, uh, and other jewelry are spreading en masse. There was also a very intensive influx of other categories of Roman imports at this time, for example, Roman bronze vessels, again, on the territory of Ukraine, we can see a concentration of its finds. These vessels were also put in the graves, first of all, the graves of the barbaricon, barbarian elites. elites. Uh, regarding other Roman imports of this period, the Roman provincial bronze coins and Antoniniani must be mentioned, as well as Roman military diplomas, of which over 60 specimens are already known and many other categories of Roman items uh, which had a military or cultic function. All of this suggests that in the second half of the third century, the barbarian military elite was formed due to active and varied contacts with the Roman Empire. In archaeology, this phenomenon is also called the Hasleben Loina Horizont, called mainly for the territory of Middle, mid uh, Germany and, uh, and uh, Poland. However, now we can confidently say that these processes also affected the Eastern Barbaricum, not just in the Central Barbaricum. So uh, it, these processes occurred the vast space between Rhine uh, and the Dnieper. Who was this elite? Elites. Uh, they were the they were the victors over the Roman army, successful mercenaries and professional warriors with whom the ancient world records. They were those who, in many ways, stole the splendor of the Roman Empire. It should be noted uh, that by the end of the third century, the function of gold uh, coins was gradually changing. The appearance of loops on the coins evidence this. Actually, this process of replacing one custom with another can be seen on the gold coins of the late third century. In this case, the old holes are sealed and loops are added instead. At the same time, the place of the loop is preserved above the imperial uh, head. This uh, change in the role of the coins is probably indirectly indicated by the intensification of gold and gold-plated barbarian uh, imitation production, which is an entirely separate uh, topic and probably also Alec have told in uh, the, one of the INS meeting. However, did this situation persist in later times? This is another complicated 
question. So today, no uh, is a question, only complicated questions. We could say that this has survived only partially. A successful fight with the gods of Constantine the Great made significant adjustments. The result was the Treaty of 332, which meant the gods could not longer attack the empire's provinces. Uh, moreover, they were grafted into the Roman army as foderati, federates. Uh, the first half of the first century was a peaceful and golden time for the territory of Eastern Barbaricum. The Chernihov archaeological culture reached its maximum uh, development during this period. Also, at, like like another cultures like Kiev uh, culture, uh, culture of Carpathian boroughs, and and so on, so on. Uh, so. Uh, on the whole, uh, one could observe a decline uh, in the inflow of gold coins. First of all, they were solid but also small gold denominations. At the same time, we can see that the concentration of finds shifts, slowly shifts to west. Another thing should also be noted that most coins have a loops instead of holes. I believe <clears throat> that a significant part of these finds may have come to the barbarians as payment for the service uh, in the Roman uh, army. First of all, the findings of bronze coins of this time, which are found in large numbers, large amounts on the territory of Barbaricum, are obviously connected with this payment. There are both single finds and hordes. I agree with those researchers who view these finds as a payment for federati, with which they returned home. The gold coins could have been some sort of savings or payment for the to the officers. It is likely that individual barbarian units may have been recruited as mercenaries as they were in the latter half of the uh, latter half of the third century. It seems that the discovery of the gold coins of the Usurper uh, Magnentius may testify to this. We know from written sources. Uh, that he employed barbarians in his army to fight against uh, Constantius the Second. Probably the barbarians from East Barbaricum also uh, had uh, have been such mercenaries. The situation with the Roman gold coins in flux probably continued during the Valentinian uh, dynasty. At the same time, another source of Roman gold coins uh, coinage may have been diplomatic gifts. Uh, finds of gold medallions in particular testify to this. On such hordes containing seven such coins from the village of Lasky in northwest Ukraine. Recently, several more finds of 4th century gold medallions from Eastern Barbaricum have become known. This includes a very interesting case of a medallion uh, from Buzavica uh, rolled up into a tube. For my opinion, the find shows that gold coins remain a symbol of prestige and not just the re result of an accumulation of wealth. But uh, medallion Buzavica, I think it's at another another case. So uh, these coins are unpublished. We are just uh, preparing with Alec Bush an article about uh, these findings. Uh, the Mm, very uh, revealing in this case is a treasure, in fact, a necklace uh, of no less than six solidi discovered not so long ago in the Belarus and published by Vitaly Sidorovich. It was evidently a status item. The most recent uh, gold coins are similarly concentrated in Western, East, Western Eastern Europe, South Western Ukraine, Moldova and Romania. This map uh, clearly indicates a tendency of gradual shifting of concentration of finds from east to west. Uh, this probably illustrates the processes of shifting power centers in the Hunic era. In general, the increase of finds uh, of solidity along the Danube Limes shows an intensive export of coins outside the empire, especially the second half of the fourth century. And the exportation significantly increased in the early 4th, 5th century, indicating the growing importance of the Huns and their allies. 
This phenomenon can be connected mainly to the well-known single tributes depending on donut even. I think the trade can also be added to this list. Uh, as trade with barbarians was regulated by a series of legal acts in the first half of the fifth century. It is believed that the outflow of Roman coins, gold coins to barbaricum had a considerable impact on the Roman monetary economy of the first half middle of the fifth century. Moreover, uh, it led to a substantial empowerment of the Roman Danubian uh, provinces in the second half of the fifth century. Generally speaking, for studying of Roman gold coins and flux, it's very effective uh, to look for dye links between the finds in the Barbaricum and those from the Imperium. The Swedish researcher Dr. Svante Fischer has already done similar research and has shown it uh, to be uh, effective. However, Swant Fischer was making uh, uh, such uh, a search uh, mechanically. Now, together with a colleague of mine, Arkadiusz Demowski, and with the great help of Anna uh, Zapolska, we are implementing a project titled The Neural Network of Solidity Contacts Between Romana Byzantine and Barbarian Worlds in the Light of the Dialing in Gold Coins Found in Europe and Central Asia. The project is financed from the resources of the Polish Science Center. It is implemented at the Faculty of Archaeology, University of Warsaw. The project started in mid 2021 and its planned duration is three years. The main aims of the project is to develop a methodology for innovative fusing of image recognition software to study coin dialings. Nowadays, as well as all known, uh, no image recognition software systems are widely and commonly used worldwide. In fact, our project is an example of rather light implementation of advanced technical solutions in the field of humanities. Our software, of our future software, is going to be developed based on a convolutional neural, uh, neural network constructed for images of coin dyes and their links. The convolutional neural network is a class of artificial neural networks. There are computing systems inspired by the biological neural networks, not like this uh, human brains, for example. This kind of network starts with an input, then information flows from the one layer of nodes to another. And a typical uh, artificial neural network has input layer of data, one or many hidden ladder, layers, and an output layer, and the nodes uh, are connected to each other. One node sends some amount of the data it received to the next node. This amount is decided by a mathematical function. The <clears throat> And the convolutional neural uh, network actually is a type of neural network in deep learning uh, considered under artificial uh, intelligence. Convolutional neural uh, networks are commonly uh, used uh, to analyze visual imagery. In, the, in, the, uh, in any case, uh, in the near future, I hope to have uh, findings to lay of late Roman gold coins from Eastern Europe ready for publication. Uh, this will be the focus of my small project, which I will be implementing as a part of Dumberton OX Summer Fellowship this summer. I would like to end of my lecture with a bridge to the present. During my lecture, I have shown you find of Roman gold coins which were discovered during archaeological investigations. But more often, we are, but more often, in 98%, uh, uh, were discovered by treasure hunters. I regret that the Eastern European museums possess a few of these finds, mostly from the old studies. Almost all of them are in private collections. However, uh, with even greater regret, I can state that these finds are smuggled primarily from the territory of Ukraine and are sold at the auctions in Europe and the US. You have already noticed that the presence of a single hole on the Aureus uh, uh, almost practically unmistakably identifies it, it as a find from the Eastern Europe, although of course it could be uh, also have been found in Central or Northern Europe or even the British Islands. Uh, 
it does not uh, take much effort to find such coins at European auctions. This is just one example of out of hundreds. This Aureus uh, was published on the Violity Forum in early 2018 and just over a year later uh, sold on, on at an a Bowles uh, auction. Of course, uh, such a hole, such hole like two holes on on this uh, on this uh, it's unusually two holes, but uh, uh, of course, this such holes dramatically affects uh, the price of the coin. Uh, this is why the coins sometimes show traces of solder holes. We have seen uh, earlier uh, that the barbarians did not neatly uh, uh, pave the holes. Uh, however, some of the coins at auctions show traces uh, uh, of neither, uh, neater repair. Uh, these traces are still visible, however, uh, as uh, on these two uh, copies uh, sold on the uh, Spink uh, auction. In principle, uh, you can find more such uh, uh, cases like this. Nevertheless, we can we cannot always be sure that these coins uh, originate, for example, from the territory of Ukraine. I just assume it. Uh, recently, however, collectors have been faced with a more serious problem. In pro particular, Professor Ronald Bude uh, has talked uh, about this problem at the last International Numismatic Congress in Warsaw. I also drew attention uh, to it in social networks and with Dr. Thomas uh, Wiencek, we also drew attention to this problem in our article, which will be published this year, I hope so. Uh, we are talking about restoring coins that do not remain their uh, hallmark. Uh, here are some very typical cases of Galliano's coins from the Loi numismatic uh, auction. Moreover, I even know that, that the person, it is Ukrainian, Ukrainian guy, uh, uh, and the place where he uh, does it. However, uh, he's not very willing, unfortunately, to make contact lightly. Professor Buda uh, showed even more examples, and I collected additional examples. Of course, this is very high craftsmanship of modern jewelers is very dangerous, especially for scientific research, as I still do not know the metal from which the holes are sealed. However, I do know that heating technology is used. I very much hope that your collections do not contain such coins. However, however, if there are, I found it very important to investigate uh, the metal composition of the restored uh, pieces. So uh, that is for me. I apologize if uh, anything was too brief or unclear, but hopefully you now have an idea after the this journey uh, uh, through the late Roman uh, period, uh, Eastern Barbaricum. Uh, so you now, uh, now have an idea of the history of Roman gold uh, outside the borders of the empire. Thank you for your attention. All right, thank you very much, Carol, for that uh, very interesting presentation on uh, a topic I think we don't talk enough about, which is at least, you know, not traditionally in Western European numismatics or in, um, you know, American numismatics, uh, the phenomenon of Roman gold coin finds uh, in Eastern Europe and out of territories like Ukraine. So I think that was uh, really great and informative and uh, uh, open it up to the floor for questions. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions for Carol. I try to answer you, to answer this question. <laughs> or you can type in the chat, I guess, if you're shy. Um, perhaps I, I might ask something, Roger Bland here. Um, Kirill, thank you very much for a fascinating presentation and it's quite extraordinary the sheer volume of finds um, that you're seeing. 
Um, sorry, my, my cat's just hoping to uh, get oh. involved as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's very, fun. Uh, very nice. <laughs> Probably, um, probably uh, my question your, your, your was, uh, my question, question was, I mean, do you, do you feel that um, the, the the number of fines that you're seeing is increasing? I think you were saying that, weren't you? I mean, uh, I suppose we always ask the question when you have this large, when you have a large increase in fines, is it going to stop? Is there going to be a peak and will it reduce? But you, so far, it's just increasing and increasing. And has this... A great increase just in the last few years has that had has that got something to do with the political conditions in ukraine or anything like that or i mean our metal detectors becoming more e easily obtainable in ukraine i mean it's um it's very striking isn't it <clears throat> yeah absolutely uh yep yep uh, sorry I, i'm starting to answer your question if, <laughs> if i might <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. uh uh Unfortunately, it's a permanent increasing the amount yeah, of, the, yeah. of, the, of the of the of the card. So, so uh, I uh, I'm based my my presentation mm. on just on 208 uh, 286 uh, hourly for okay. uh, this moment. I have for this moment I have uh, uh, at least at least 946 uh, yesterday morning. Six uh, 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 <laughs> mostly, mostly, of course, mid 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 third uh, century. Uh, so, uh, and uh, every every week, every <laughs> week, every 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 week or two weeks, I'm uh, just noticed uh, a new find of uh, our uh, of our uh, sometimes uh, treasure hunters. Uh, Published uh, mm. our, uh, our rail, our rail because because you know they want to, to hidden this information uh, from the police uh, or from the mm. yeah mm. and from the uh, from the other uh, other persons uh, sometimes for example last time uh, I'm uh, noted that uh, uh, with a economical crisis in Ukraine what is started uh, started with this uh, uh, aggression russian aggression uh, many people starting to sell, sell uh, uh, right. fragments of our and uh, and our and our mm -hmm. uh, so i think the real number of our uh, at at least uh, mm, we can double this uh, mm -hmm. uh, this amount. I think I think it's it's at least at least two two thousand of uh, our uh, wow. were found. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's yeah, uh, and, and 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 nothing nothing changing now <laughs> with with <laughs> the war no. and and and. Uh, uh, I, I also can also say that sorry for a long uh, answer uh, because it's a very very uh, important and very sure. um, uh, very very difficult problem. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. now on the western part of Ukraine, the uh, treasure hunters' activity uh, back uh, in such a way like uh, before the war so okay so. i see yeah. yeah thank you thank yeah. you very much thank you kirill kirill can you hear yeah. me yeah absolutely it's, very it's good. it's yelena thank you so yeah, much hello <laughs> hi dear hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you so much it, it's really very very interesting and uh i just want to ask you did you uh, use in your study something from uh, Nudelman publication because it's also of course yes yeah of course, important yes. and I want to know if you know about this uh, gold litsinius coin which was found I published this uh, near Avidopol. Uh, yes of course of course yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm collecting all this information of course yeah. I'm used to uh, use Nudelman and uh, uh, Nudelman monograph and, and articles uh, and uh, as well as well uh, uh, 
more recent uh, monographs uh, like uh, Alexandru Popa and Larisa Ciobanu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and probably, probably, I'm sorry if I uh, did, did, did cartographied it uh, uh, on my maps. Uh, but yeah, of it's course, very of course, I, of, yeah. yeah, of course, of course, of course, I mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely know about about, about these finds, and and now, uh, Chris uh, Christian, it's uh, attention. Mm -hmm. I hope starting to fill in database <laughs> from and coin hearts of Roman uh, coin hearts of Roman Empire with this. <laughs> it, it, it's very uh, important this. job. It's very important research and. You know, after Kropotkin, uh, I don't believe that it's more uh, more publication. We have more vast publication, and your job is very, very important. And I also think that it will be good to see different of silver finds, because you know that in, uh, yeah, I study yeah. late Roman and Byzantine yeah, yeah. period in that territory, and it's very important to see uh, several no, several uh, hordes of Silikva, huge hordes, you yeah. know, Valentian uh, time. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think it's very important because silver and bronze more talking uh, uh, to us as economical uh, purpose, you know, than gold, yeah. which is more like a treasure. And especially you can see that this is gold and people and gold is gold but silver and bronze is i think it's very important to pay yes, more attention yes of course to this. yeah yeah gold gold just uh, uh, just uh, belongs to elites yeah yes, and exactly, silver exactly. it's not 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 always belongs to elites yeah. or, or middle class uh, sometimes yeah, but sure. of course of course the ma ma middle class was a more, more, uh, huge than 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 uh, elites i, I mean uh, amount of but people. if you want About... to see, I'm sorry, but if you want yeah, yeah. to see more economical uh, picture of this territory, I think it's very important because right now it's appear more and more, uh, you know, material. Yeah. And uh, I think it will be very interesting if next of your step of your research it will concern these uh, Fine. Thank you, thank you very much, Elena. Uh, but of course, of course, I'm slowly, slowly dealing with it, and yeah, uh, sure. with my in in my in my publication. Now we are just uh, sent our uh, joint publication with uh, uh, Professor Alexander Busha and Busha. Uh, Professor Arkadiusz Dymowski uh, to the uh, to the volume in the Edinburgh concerning uh, silver in the Barbaricum. So we also uh, 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 raised such questions. Questions in in our article, so I think I I, I uh, when it will be published, I of course I'm I'm sent you, uh, yeah, you. this this paper uh, and uh, even even now we are just uh, with some of my colleagues have uh, have an idea for uh, for a project, silica uh, silica project. Uh, mm -hmm. in barbaricum i think it's it's exactly. a very important and very it very is. interesting so yeah. Yeah. so of course of course it's a uh, it's a, another another uh, another way of uh, yes. another direction of my it's uh, another huge uh, job for you <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm alone and for, yeah, unfortunately I, I know, for now I I'm, I'm i'm practically alone with my uh, job so it's too much but material and i'm much, alone <laughs> exactly yeah i understand it's very difficult and i think it's very important that you can register what appear from territory of ukraine to some auction houses you know mm -hmm. because uh, this information, you, you know, ma, ma, as an archaeologist, I hate when black archaeologists doing our job. And mm -hmm. this is very important, to, at least to register what appeared. And thank you very I, much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for all your job and good luck. And Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraini. Slava. Slava. Thank you, Kirill. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No. Christian, I guess. So. Hi, everyone. Hey, Terry, good to see everyone. And thank you very much for this beautiful presentation.
somehow I knew it would be absolutely great because I know you. My first question, when are you starting to uh, fill in the data for the Coinhort project? Uh, okay, it's a very, very simple uh, answer. In August, my dear, uh, when I come into Oxford for one month scholarship. <laughs> good, good. Well, it's an online project. You can start tomorrow. Okay. Uh, uh, right. Uh, secondly, uh, just like uh, to break the ice, you know, in a funny way, uh, you know that in Romania, we have 26,000 registered detectories. So I have one for each 730 person in Romania. Ah, good to know. Uh, and so, so very, very updated uh, information. Thank you. So, Thank you. Somehow to combine what already Roger and Elena asked you, like, uh, indeed, the use of metal detecting together with changing the legislation about metal detail, detecting and the rewards for metal detecting, detecting somehow like the British model uh, has ended up with a huge amount of discoveries on the territory of Romania, Elena, not on archaeological sites. They are totally forbidden. So uh, what is good to know to combine gold and silver, I can tell you from now on that despite that I have at the moment 48 new Roman hordes in Romania, I have not even one gold coin among all the finds. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So that it's you interesting. can take it for yeah. your uh, uh, statistics. And the best I have is comes from two days ago. I have a horde, and this is wonderful, with a very worn out denarii from Vespasian to Commodus. And there is the, the latest coin is a siliqua of Constantius II. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the horde is entirely recovered. I went to the fine spot with the metal detectories and believe me, the fact he has all the coins uh, gave it to us. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. something that probably we will not uh, find out without the metal detectories. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. it for me. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we're right at two o'clock, so we should probably bring this to a close. Uh, I see there's some questions in the chat. Uh, Carol, do you have an objection if I share your email in the chat so that? Yes, absolutely. 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 Okay. I'm open. Yeah. 